Hello everyone and welcome to another video and welcome to Michael Logan stroke Idris Douglas episode 5 unless of course this isn't episode 5 it might not be by the time I upload it it doesn't really matter which episode it is because our man went through so many fake confessions and talked to so many of my girls that I started to get confused especially when I was making the videos in this video he's talking to Persephone he was talking to Persephone at pretty much the same time that he was talking to Samantha. Hello, Persephone, he'd said. Hello, Idris, said Persephone. How are you doing today, he asked. Oh, I again, I twisted my ankle this morning. I tripped over a stone in the street. Very silly of me. I didn't, by the way, she made that up. Sorry about that. Thank you. Hope you're good now, he said the next day. My ankle's still swollen. and I've put a bandage on it and it does feel better. Oh my God, he said on the Wednesday. Don't worry much. You will get better, OK? Who said I was worrying? That's something that can cause you to worry, he said. It's much better now, still a bit bruised, but I can walk OK. That's impressive. Happy for you, he said. This was Thursday evening. Thank you, it's even better this evening. It's late now, so I'm just off to bed. I thought we could talk for a while, he said. I was so busy at work today. I couldn't talk to you. That's OK. It was almost 11pm here when I went to bed. That's OK. Good morning, he said. And I hope you're taking note of the time of day he thinks it is. Good morning, said Persephone. I'm just having a quick breakfast and I have to hang up some washing and go out. OK, just done having coffee. What about you? I'll give you a clue. This was about 6.30 in the evening, where he claimed later to be. What are you taking for breakfast? he asked. I'll just go home, she said. I went to a craft sale in the town hall. You haven't told me who you are, where do you live, or what do you do. I live on Orkney off the north coast of Scotland. I don't work. My divorce settlement supports me. I'm from California, he said. I'm a military officer on a deployment. On a deployment where? OK, you're here, he said. Australia! He tried calling her. I'm sorry, I was outside taking the washing off the line. Shall I call you back? OK, if you wish to. I'm free now, he said. And so she called him. Oh, hello. 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 Where, where are you in Australia? Here, here, here. I gave that out to you earlier, right? Yeah, where are you in Australia? OK. Hope you're good, right? Where are you in Australia? OK, no, I, I'm going to call you back. Just give me a few minutes, OK? I'm very busy right now. I'm going to call you back. Get something to attend, OK? Oh, you mean, so when you've worked, you mean when you've worked out where you are? OK, Australia. You know Australia, right? Yeah, I know where Australia is. Where are you in Australia? Me, okay, just send the document and send it to the base. Tell the soldiers that I need them to go on a patrol right. Okay, oh, hold on, I'm gonna call you back, okay? I'm gonna call you back, okay? Okay. I'll be back. Just hold on, he said when the call had ended. Give me a sec. Okay. He disappeared for a while. Clearly, he didn't know anywhere in Australia, but he had to think of an excuse. And so, I'll just warn you about the photograph that's about to appear on your screen. It isn't what you think it is at first glance, I promise you. We've seen it before, or at least I have. I think I blurred it out last time. But Persephone is about to explain to you what that photograph really is. I'm here, dear. We just got hit. Not really happy now. Oh, dear, how awful, said a sceptical Persephone. Didn't the fireproof suit work? I guess it did. What it you in Australia? A kangaroo? Of course it worked. Steve survived it, he said, backtracking quickly. Awesome, what hit him in Australia? It's an explosion, he said. What exploded? Diacetyl peroxide, he said. Why did you have that? asked Persephone. It's a liquid bomb, he said. Why did you have a liquid bomb? You should be more careful or you throw it at. It was rough handled, he said, though the team wanted to put it to the test. I guess it worked. Where are you in Australia? Sure, he said, and then copied this wonderful paragraph, which, if you read it closely, I think has three different locations in it. Pine Gap, 
Joint Defence Facility Pine Gap, JDFPG, near Alice Springs, Northern Territory. Naval Communications Station, Harold E. Holt, located on the northwest coast of Australia, six kilometres, four miles north of the town of Exmouth, Western Australia. Robertson Barracks, located in Darwin, Northern Territory. Do not communicate to this address to anyone, he said. That's two places, isn't it? said Persephone, who'd only skim read it. Which one are you in? Yeah, it is. Unless they moved Alice Springs, of course. So where are you? There are two US military bases currently in Australia, Google informed him. One of them is operated by members of the United States intelligence community and another is operated by the United States Navy. Which one are you in? she asked. Pine Gaps! Joint Defence Facility Pine Gap, JGFPG, near Alice Springs, Northern Territory, he said. OK, why do you need bombs there? Where are you now, he asked. On the sofa, where are you now? On the field, sipping my coffee, he said. Have you had dinner yet? Sipping coffee when you just got hit? It's a military test, he said. And you'll find out very quickly this man never makes sense. You said you weren't happy. Nothing much. I wasn't happy because it wasn't what I expected. Why do you need bombs in Alice Springs? It sounded as if you thought you were under attack. Oh, really? Not an attack. If I sounded so, can you tell me more about yourself? Why do you need bombs in Alice Springs? How many more times will I have to ask? Did I tell you we need bombs in Alice Springs? Did I? Uh, one just exploded, dingbat. Tell me, he said. Why do you have bombs in Alice Springs? And she copied the bit where he'd said, it's a liquid bomb. He copied the bit where she'd said, one just exploded, dingbat. Did you just call me that? Said our hurt scammer. What do you think? Said Persephone. You told me that a bomb exploded in Alice Springs. You told me it was a military test in Alice Springs. Why do you have bombs in Alice Springs? The soldiers use it for a test. Answer my question. Not until you answer mine. And which question of yours haven't I answered? This one, she said, copying the bit Wade said, did you just call me that? And she said, what do you think? With answer, she added, or this one, where he'd said, did I tell you we need bombs in Alice Springs? Did I? With answer, she said, and copied the bit where she'd said, you told me that a bomb exploded in Alice Springs. You told me it was a military test in Alice Springs. Why do you have bombs in Alice Springs? Because of the war going on here, he said. So why wouldn't I? Well, we need a bomb. War? Who is Australia at war with? I'll give you a few seconds to think about that before I show you the answer. Oh, Russia, he said. My goodness, not content with war in the Ukraine. They've declared war on Australia. Odd that it hasn't been in the news. Is it a top secret war? You wouldn't know, he said. I don't know. Why hasn't it been on the news? Do the Australian people know? You don't have to ask further, he said. I've told you what you need to know. The question is, do you know? I'll assume Russia are just fighting in Alice Springs. They probably sailed their submarines there, so no one saw them coming. Would you ever yell at me for any reason? He asked. And I think at that point he might possibly have felt one of those confessions coming on. Depends what that reason is, said Persephone. I have to go and take dinner out of the oven and be right back. But while she was taking dinner out of the oven, I think he possibly had a change of heart. OK, then take your time, he said. I'll wait for you. Persephone returned. It's cooked. I'll be back when I've eaten it. Meanwhile, you can tell me why I might want to yell at you. Having had a complete change of heart, that man thought he'd completely changed the subject. OK, then, do you live alone? Just asking. Oh, uh, I thought there was something you wanted to tell me, said Persephone. I might do, in reply to, do you live alone? Why do you want to know? Nothing. Do you regret talking to me? Oh, no, pal, she was having great fun. We don't regret her talking to you. What a strange question. Why would I regret talking to you? How old are you? he asked. Fifty-four. How old are you? Fifty-one. You got kids? I've got two daughters. One lives in Leeds and one lives in Brighton. Oh, OK, he said. Are they married? Persephone, at least I, misread that. 
and thought he'd said, are you married? No, she said, are you? I'm not yet. How about you? Hasn't changed since I told you 30 seconds ago, said Persephone, who, as I said, had misread what he'd said. I've heard of speed dating, but I think 30 seconds would be a record. Sure, he said. Then I reread what he'd said. Sorry, my bad. I was reading too quickly. The girls aren't married, nor am I. But why haven't you got married? You're really a beautiful lady. I'm not sure that's any of your business. I already told you I'm divorced. Of course it is. Are you dating someone? Maybe you don't want to talk about it. How is it any of your business? Not a business, he said. Are you married? I'm not. Divorced, he said. Why haven't you got married? She asked. Maybe sooner. Still searching. Whatever that means. Are you mad at me for asking? He said. Who's the man in your profile photo? She asked. That's me, he said. And you're 51. Have we met before? He asked. That's an old pick, he said, realising that the person in the photo was about 30. Before what? I don't remember meeting you. Where do you think we met? Same here with me, he said. Not met you before. Then why did you ask? Nothing much, he said. Maybe you got hit by one of those stray Russian bombs in Alice Springs and lost your memory. Ha ha! Would take that as a joke, he said. As they say, it takes one to know one, said Persephone. Sure, he said. Followed by, what are your favourite colours? Indiana orangery, what are yours? Blue and white, fave day of the week. Blimey, is this a quiz, she said. Nope. Do I get points for getting the right answer? Do you think so, he asked. Sounds like you're working your way down a list of childish questions. Just getting to know you. Tell me how long you've been in Australia, she asked. Two years, he said. It's an amazing country, said Persephone. What do you think of Uluru? Not been there, he said. This was a few minutes later. I'm fairly sure he had to resort to Google to find out what she was talking about. Of course you have, she said, you've been in Alice Springs for two years. But I've heard of their rock, he said. Rock, that's your description. At least try and sound believable. You've been there, he asked. Yes, said Persephone. Actually, I haven't. I've seen a lot of Australia, but I've never been to Uluru. And don't try the I've been confined to base in Alice for two years sob story. OK, so what interests you in probably going again in your head? Who said I want to go again? It's you that's only a few miles away and claims not to have been there. A few miles by Australian standards, that is. Where have you been in Australia in two years? Obviously, you get leave. Not sure about that, he said. Not sure you get leave or you can't remember where you've been. Haven't been anywhere yet, he said. In two years, like I said, you could at least try and sound believable. Of course, does it mean I got to move around, he said and sending a question mark in reply to her saying you could at least try and sound believable what i said replied persephone next time you get leave you should do some sightseeing with who you if you're inviting me for sure that would be great he said when do you next get leave i really would like another trip to australia wow said our man getting it in there at last but got no idea yet maybe till next year Oh, said Persephone, sending a sad face. I'll let you know. Hope you're good. You mean you've used up all your leave? It's only April. Nope. I've been on a vacation just once, but maybe should apply for one next month. Then you must have lots of leave left to take. Yeah, for the past one year, haven't gone on a vacation. I'd need a few weeks' notice to book a flight and make arrangements. I'll need to apply for a visa. Will you still be at war with Russia? Is it safe for foreigners to enter the country? Or is it just Alice Springs that's at war? Then I'll meet you first in Orkney, he said. Then we can plan together. Why would you fly all the way here first? And then a man tied himself up in knots. I'll communicate to you, OK, he said, in reply to her, asking if it was safe for foreigners to enter the country. And in reply to her saying, why would he fly all the way here first? He said, ain't we going together? Yes, said Persephone, where are you? 
so at least I can spend some months with you. Or maybe you should write for a vacation for me. You haven't told me where you are. Australia, he said, remembering where he was meant to be. So why would you fly to Orkney just so you can fly back to Australia? But where will you want us to visit in Australia, I said. I must go on a vacation before I can go with you to anywhere. That's why. Oh, you aren't allowed to go on leave in Australia. I'd better show myself round then. Not when I'm on duty. I need a vacation first, so I can be free to move around. Anywhere. You don't count sightseeing in Australia as a vacation? No, no. Then there's no point in me coming to see you if you won't be able to show me around. You'll have to go back to work. I'm not aware there are any restrictions on movement in Australia, she said in reply to him saying, so I can be free to move around anywhere, except Alice Springs, of course, because they're at war. I think that's a good idea, she said, in reply to him saying, maybe she should write for a vacation for him. You clearly need a vacation. No restrictions, he said, but as a soldier on deployment, I have to go on a vacation first. I'm sure you can work out the logic to that one, ladies and gentlemen, because I can't. There you go. That's right, he said replied to her saying he clearly needed a vacation and in reply to him saying all that rubbish about no restrictions but as a soldier on deployment he has to go on vacation first Persephone said oh yes that makes perfect sense obviously so when when that be he said who should I write to President Biden are you known to him personally not President Biden maybe I will have to get the mail address for you okay will that be okay but when will that be? he asked. When will what be? asked Persephone. Dunno yet. Maybe you tell me. You ask me, when will that be? When will what be? This, he said, copying the bit where she'd said, who should I write to? President Biden. You said not to write to him. Can I get it for you maybe tomorrow? he said. Of course. Don't you know it? Yeah, it's taken care of by the military, not the president. Persephone facetiously suggested President Biden 007 at gmail dot com. Not the president, he said. I said I'm going to get it for you maybe tomorrow. OK, I need to confirm first. Yeah, of course you do. It's not easy finding an email address. What do you mean? he asked. You said you'll get it maybe tomorrow. I assume that means you might not manage to find it by tomorrow. So it must be hard to find. No, it won't. I promise, he said. Good, said Persephone, and I suspect that at that point that man was trying to find a money mule or someone that could receive money should Persephone fall for the you need to pay for my leave trick. I'll spend up to three months or more, he said. I'm not sure I want to spend three months in Australia. It's a thought. Maybe we could buy a motorhome and do some touring. Sure, that'll be nice. Also, maybe you show me around your country too. Probably. Meet with your daughters. If you want to, I'm sure you'll love Orkney. We have lots of rocks too. With huge apologies, obviously, to both Australia and Orkney. Of course I will, he said. That going to be great. Done with your dinner? Yeah. What did you prepare? He asked. Dinner, said Persephone. Are you on night duty? Yes, he said, suddenly realising that it was about quarter to five in the morning by now in Mellis Springs. How did you know that? Guesswork said Persephone. Oh, OK. You're good at that. I know. It was amazingly light outside when you took that photo two hours ago. Remember that photo of a man in a fire suit. Australia can be just awesome sometimes. Let me know when you find that email. I have to go and do the washing up. OK, will do, he said. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye for now, said Persephone. Just gotten it, he announced that night. US Military Australia 80 at gmail.com. I hope you can all see that that clearly isn't a US official military email address. Captain Douglas, he added rather randomly. Why did you randomly say that? Thanks, but I have no idea what I need to do. You will be asked. That's I just recalled, he said. Good morning, dear. Let me guide you then. First, what is our relationship? I think there should be a solid relationship between you and I. That's will make it very easier. OK, 
Relationship? You're a friend, said Persephone. How can we have a relationship? I hardly know you. We will meet very soon, isn't he, said. I don't know when, she said. Depends on when you get leave. And we have about three months or more together travelling, and so on. All these scammers have a very strange idea of how much leave someone who works can actually get, don't they? As soon as you apply to the military, you'll be told, he said. If we find we get on, we might not like each other. I've only known you for six days. How can you say that? We're friends till now, ain't we? Oh, you're one of those men who claims to fall in love with every woman they meet, even though he barely knows them. That isn't a good sign. I have no idea what to do. Give me at least a clue. No, he said, in reply to her saying, are you one of those men who claims to fall in love with every woman they meet? Why would you say that, he said. Okay, he said, in reply to her saying she had no idea what to do. Give me a clue. And in reply to him saying, no, why would you say that? She said, uh, what do you think? Read what you said. Forgive my manners. Should I say something? Yeah, tell me what I need to do, please. When I land safely, I will kneel down and do it the right way by putting a ring on your finger. Will you marry me? I have no idea to love met you, said Persephone. So we spend the rest of our lives together. But I'm flattered that you've asked. Oh, please, you don't need to common. I'm not common, how rude, said Persephone. I'm being more serious than ever, he said. Apologies, my bad. Sorry about that. You're priceless. Just tell me what I need to do. Because I was getting a bit impatient with him by then. Just wanted to get to the end of the scam. OK, hope you haven't sent anything yet, he said. So what? asked Persephone. I mean, hope you haven't wrote to them yet. How can I do that, dingbat? I keep asking you to tell me what to do and you keep avoiding the question. I'm beginning to think you aren't serious about wanting to come here. Ain't avoiding the question. This what you will write. You gotta start with you name and then with the request for me to be granted a leave. That is about family issues with my name and mail address. I'm sending you my mail address now. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to harass him. Idris Douglas, US Army at gmail.com. I'll probably need your service number so they can find you, said Persephone. There are hundreds of thousands of US soldiers. Yeah, I'm going to send it to you, he said. After then, you end it, saying you did be happy if your request is granted. I've written it, she said, just waiting for your service number. And so he gave her a service number. Got it? He answered. OK, I sent it, she said. And now I'll show you where he got that service number from. And here it is. It's a sample service number taken from Wikipedia. Whatever may be your told, he said, please do let me know, OK, when it will be granted. Of course I will, she said. Sure then, he said. And then this happened. How very odd, she said. They've sent me a blank email. And she sent him a screenshot of what had come through. What's that, he asked. It's what they just sent me, said Persephone. How could, he asked. I have no idea, said Persephone. Maybe just hold and hear from them, he said. Could you just tell them they forgot to include a message, please? Not sure about that. Maybe give some time, he said. Maybe they had a slow connection, because I've now been sent some kind of certificate or document that I need to read. OK, let me know, he said. They can't make silly mistakes, I'm sure. Oh, they're thick said Persephone. They sent me this stupid form. How on earth am I supposed to fill it in? It's just an image. It wasn't a downloadable form of any kind. And as usual, let's just have a look at it. Department of Defense, United States of America, form 3065. And here is a part of the genuine form 3065. Applicant information, it said. First name, middle name, last name, address, which they can't spell correctly, sex, relationship, phone number. And then the service member's information, first name, middle name, last name, rank, country, deployed to. And I'm sure I've said on this channel before, the US military doesn't require someone else to apply for leave on behalf of their members. 
the member always has to do that for themselves. Note, it continues, all applicant are required to pay a processing fee of $220 US dollars for processing. By my signature, it concludes, I hereby declare that every information provided in this family and friends form G6, which not so long ago was a form 3065, is to best of my knowledge. My signature represents to comply with family and friends processing of above named officer. You'd think that at least the US Army would be able to write something that made sense. Ah, no, said Persephone. Could you fill it in and send it back to me, please? I don't know the information they're asking for, and my personal information is none of their business. It's you that wants leave, not me. This is the form, he said. Oh, you can reply it by reading and answering the questions and then send it back to them. OK, said Persephone. Yeah, he said in reply to her saying, it's him that wants leave, not her. No, I can't read an answer, she said. I have to sign and date it. Please do it yourself and send it back to me. Just put MYOB beside my personal info. It's nothing to do with them and you have to send them the fee too. It's an offence. I can't touch that, he said. Then I guess you can't have leave, said Persephone. I'll be implicated in doing so. It's an offence. I've never heard of anyone saying it was an offence to apply for the leave you're entitled to. OK then, he said. I'll come and visit you next time I come to Australia. Tell me something, she said. I got nothing to tell you now, he said. How's the war in Alice Springs, she asked. Still going on, he said. And have you heard anything more from Hare Grove Farms? Remember when he was talking to Samantha, Samantha found the link to the fruit farm where he could apply for work as an overseas worker. Although why they'd want to employ someone so idiotically stupid that they think Russia is at war with Australia in Alice Springs is totally beyond me. I'd imagine that they need employees with brains and common sense. Struck dumb, are you? Not going to tell me how sorry you are and that you won't scam again. How disappointing. Haven't heard anything yet, he said. No, hopefully you won't, she said. I can't imagine they need such thick employees as you. Goodbye. I got a mail from them, he said, saying go away, we don't employ thieves and liars. I'm sorry, please, he said. You forgot the bit where you tell me you won't scam again, don't disappoint me. He sent the bit where Flora had said to him, now go away, I've had enough of you. Go moan, cry and complain to someone else. Maybe Persephone will listen to you. I can't be bothered. Or Samantha, heart of gold that one, even if she has made some bad life choices. Oh dear, said Persephone, you are having a good day. You were told we'd invaded the internet and we know who you are. I'm deeply sorry, he said, feeling one of those confessions coming on. I just need help. That's all. Any time I try lying, I always get caught. It's not my pleasure doing this. I don't get any praise from either myself. Of course you enjoy doing it, said Persephone. How many times would you say that you've apologised and how many times would you say you've promised not to scam again? Rough estimate. A man sent a voicemail. Yes, each time I say it and then i'll just wait and then I'll, i don't have anyone to help me nothing and stuff like that so i get pushed back to go in, into the internet and then try to scam people i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm really sorry i just need a job use your own bloody initiative man and stop acting like a small cafe boy said persephone if you want to get anywhere you have to use your own initiative do you think elon musk was waiting for someone to help him do you think richard branson relied on mummy's help well he might have done i wouldn't know that's the reason i applied for haygrove farms he said no it's not pal it's because samantha found you the link and told you to use it do you think tiger woods waited for someone to tell him how to become a good golfer I guess they did had what to fall back on. I got none. And in reply to him saying that's the reason I applied to Haygrove Farms, Persephone said, which you only did because Samantha found the contact for you. How many other farms have you found for yourself? How many other farms have you applied to? Let me guess. None, because you're too lazy and pathetic to do any research for yourself. Any job, just one, ain't lying this time, he said. Exactly, too lazy even to do an internet search for yourself, she said. He sent the screenshot of their reply. No wonder no one will help you, 
said Persephone, you're an idle, lazy, entitled toad. That's 2022, you dingbat. Do some bloody research, you pathetic excuse for a man. That's where I was confused, he said. I will, because either Haygrove haven't started recruiting this season, or they forgot to amend their reply, because it says 2022 fruit season on it. Five dozens of places that are looking for workers, she said. But is there a recent link? he asked. How the bloody hell would I know? That shows me you're too childish and pathetic to do anything for yourself. You can't even do an internet search to find other places or find an email address for them. I'm going to man up, he said, and do some research on current farm jobs. Or find a legit agency, she said. How do I find that, he asked. No, you aren't, she said, and replied to him saying he was going to man up. You're a pathetic loser who expects mummy to hand him everything on a plate. And then, in reply to him saying, How do I find that? She said, See what I said, you're a pathetic loser who expects everything to be handed to him. I would be very pleased. I'm sorry, he said. It's too much on me. If you continue acting like a small boy, the world will treat you like a small boy. Please take it easy on me, said our small boy. You're right. No, you're a pathetic excuse for a human being. Now go away and consider your life choices. But remember, we know who you are. Sure, I won't be involved any more, he said. Sending a screenshot from the UK government website where it said he needed a visa. I've successfully applied for about five different places. Here's it, he said. Sending a screenshot. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to get a job as a head housekeeper. But you've got to admit it was to start. Might have been better if you'd applied for about 50 jobs, but, you know. The problem is, or at least in my personal opinion, the problem is that this guy has no initiative, no gumption of his own. I mean, come on, and I've probably said this in another video somewhere, every year hundreds of thousands of fruit pickers and seasonal farm workers come to the UK and to many other countries, and they come from countries all around the world, and they don't rely on someone else to get their visa for them, or find the links for them. They do it for themselves. They use their own initiative. At this point, our man disappeared. I'm making this video six days later. He hasn't been seen on Persephone's account. But when I say he disappeared, I only mean he disappeared from Persephone's life. Because there are more episodes to come of this. It's possible I've already lost the plot. I think this is episode five, and I think Samantha was episode four, and I'm fairly certain there's going to be an episode six. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please like it, please share it, please comment down below, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again, very likely, in another episode of Michael Logan, Stroke Idris Douglas. <laughs>